name is Kenan Bölükbaşı. I am going to present an automated sprite rendering system using Blender. It's okay. Let's just first thing first. Uh, the point of the talk is not really going to be about uh, the introduction or showcase of the system, but actually I want to show how easily it, this, time, uh, this kind of thing can be put together uh, using Floss. And yes first just a little brief about the thing so it's an in-house automated sprite rendering system using blender it has no name yet so uh, it is used uh, it's designed for in-game use because we are producing uh, mobile games and we need to use sprites for that stuff so yes uh, yeah, it makes our job pretty easily, easy actually because uh, we automate so many things that we normally have to make manually and it takes time and all the revisions again takes time. Uh, and also it works completely on Blender except a little uh, command line interface written in shell script, uh, written in Python and bash and like 500 lines of codes. The base system is written uh, in one month, uh, more or less, uh, by me. Uh, and there is the Atlas generator part, which is written by Ismail Donar. He is my colleague from my company. It is not released yet. We have some plans to release it as open source, but uh, not right now. And I would, in fact, I would like to uh, actually love to hear if there is actually interest in that stuff or not, because I have no idea who, what's the uh, industry actually uses for that kind of stuff. So maybe there is a gap for that. I don't really know. I couldn't find uh, such thing before writing this thing. Uh, briefly, it uses 3D models generated in, the des in our design department. Uh, it takes them as, imports them as Colada exchange files. And uh, the system auto automatically imports the model as shading, texturing, lighting and cameras, environment effects, some other things like uh, rotation for some models that need to be rotated and it does the render settings and it renders, generate the atlas, blah 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 and uh, suddenly you see it on the game, okay? And again, who I am? I'm Kenan Bölükbaşı, I live in Istanbul, I'm a CG generalist, kinda. Uh, uh, and also a hobbyist programmer and kind of designer. Uh, I use a fully open source software stack for six, seven years as a professional. I'm the lead uh, of graf graphics department at, at Exerio Studios, which is again located in Istanbul. Uh, I heavily use B Blender, GIMP, uh, Inkscape, Image Magic, and as operating system Arch Linux. And Exerio Studios, again, uh, I want to tell you a little about us because we completely use open source software in the studio as well. Uh, we are a game development studio located in Istanbul, completely uh, f uh, libre uh, open source technology stack on development, fully in-house production infrastructure and game engine. Uh, we are a small company like 13 people but we are very ambitious and we have people that uh, knows their job luckily and seven people are actually working on the project uh, i'm working right now and three on development four on graphics i'm um, included in the graphics stuff we are doing an online multiplayer cross-platform strategy game it works on uh, mac and linux and windows and ios and Android, pretty much everything. Uh, it's it's okay. Yeah, uh, our game uses sprites for rendering, as I already told. And uh, we needed. Uh, my employer asked me when I first joined the company. My employer asked me to. Uh, provide some kind of a system, not uh, the one I came up with at the end, but some kind of a system so that we can easily see the graphics we generate in in game directly, so uh, not to interrupt with their agile development process. 
so we started developing this thing and it was actually needed because uh, when you are doing sprites uh, it's a little hard and pro uh, problematic thing because you always have to maintain the same assets over and over again and render them again and again and uh, too many assets uh, you can easily make mistakes like five like 50 assets and many variations of them and you have to uh, take many render many sequences and it's very easy to make mistakes so I needed to automate it and also there was some settings that were I so we needed uh, blenders user should probably thought okay for uh, for some sharing structures and stuff you can already link libraries so uh, many things can easily be added and centrally uh, controlled but in this case really linking libraries didn't do it so anyway um, it was so much repetitive work uh, we always had to revise the concepts the materials and the lightings, lighting are, are, were due to, due to change. Models should be rendered with varying number of directions so that the characters can go like uh, eight directions or so. Uh, and sprites should, have, should be managed properly for Atlas generation so the actual program can read the sprites. And again, to sum up, so many repet repetition, variation, linking library didn't do it. Uh, everything changes constantly, and agile development thing. So I realized I need some kind of system to optimize labor. Actually, I was doing the modeling and animation stuff at the beginning, so my labor. Uh, I needed a centralized mechanism to control the settings, and I never done Python before, but I realized it was easy, so let's just start doing this. And my aim was uh, from the left going to the right. It was like... Uh, shrinking all this workflow, uh, automating everything as possible, and we actually pretty much uh, were successful in that. So normally you should first come up with a concept and then do the modeling, the animation, the texturing, the materials. Uh, you should set up the environments, lighting, render settings, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I managed to cut out all these parts in the middle, so just the concepts, modeling, uh, and also, of course, animation, <coughs> texturing, and the game, uh, directly in-game visuals. So, there were also later additions to the system that we did. Uh, the frame step mechanism is actually a pretty nice mechanism, and it's already in Blender, so I'm not r really counting that. Uh, and also, okay, just a second. Okay, so I ne also needed proper handling of imports, which means that normally if you only uh, come up with a uh, system that imports the stuff and renders the stuff, but if you actually need it to sometimes modify these things in Blender, it will again be problematic because it w they were not being imported, imported for easily modify the stuff. And so we needed something for that too and we managed to come up with it and Colada support uh, means you can pretty much do the modeling and animation stuff in uh, any software at all just uh, except if you are doing rigging I'm talking about basic animation because rigging stuff is completely different and several animation directions were imported so that again the characters can walk around uh, we managed to do some uh, little system that takes apart the model and creates a random particle and turns it around one time so that you can use it as a particle in the animation uh, like after an explosion or something and we also did some kind of primitive uh, effects and compositing and some other stuff as you can see it's a little technical anyway okay but I think I missed somewhere in the yeah, okay, I didn't miss anything. Anyway, so I can turn to this stuff later. Just first show this. 
it's the system right now works like this you start uh, it's it has a command line interface and you say okay I want to create uh, a new unit called for example um, I don't know mechanic that is the name of the unit so it creates a, something like a skeleton for you it creates a project directory and uh, it creates a blender file in it so you just open it and do the modeling and close the stuff and put it around there or you might try to uh, import it in case it is actually uh, done in some other modeling software so you say uh, create me a new unit and import uh, the model named uh, mechanic and it will do the import thing of the textures and the materials and it will uh, do the necessary uh, arrangements and it will import for example if your mechanic uh, unit has like five different levels it will actually import all these levels in one file and as different scenes and if you have like again for the same units like have um, five different kind of animations it will again import all the animations in the same file so that you can easily work in only one file for one uh, unit after that anyway and then uh, if you want to render it it does all the arrangements and just uh, takes the render and okay this is a sample uh, command line interface command this is actually uh, does more than one thing so the name of the command line interface is a sprite and uh, the parameters you can see here are the parameters I was just talking about it's n is for creating a new unit i is for uh, doing the import in the in this new unit uh, and r is for rendering and a is for atlas generation and the names of the, that come after that are the ones that automatically uh, processed so uh, all these models uh, are going to be automatically processed and rendered and the atlas generation will done after you run this command and this uh, actual result will be something like this I'm not sure you can see the stuff but uh, these are four generated atlas results as you can see and there is like uh, six eight models in there they're all rendered correctly and put into the file and I can't really I don't think uh, it is easy to see the details but there are some details like some little effects and distortions that we int intentionally did and they are all done automatically okay let's just show a little example so yes this is my production directory uh, imports are the files that actually come, come from, came from the uh, design department to me these in for example like a unit there is a models and there is a textures directory and the animations are inside them as collada files and png files they are all separate uh, and there is absolutely no material creation uh, exists in the files uh, only the base models and the animations and also you are you give some placeholder names for the materials but do no settings at all because they are all replaced afterwards so anyway and the model directory is the one that is populated after the importing of stuff the asset directory is the one that is populated after the rendering of the stuff so let's just do a little example about it so okay so gooseberry when I first import just a second it's a little slow so air missiles okay so we have the an animation for one of our models let's just open it and as you can see it, the model and a basic animation is here but there is actually no materials 
There are materials, but there are no settings applied to any material. There are only okay. There are only placeholder names for the actual materials, and no texture whatsoever. So only the materials, and as you can see, no cameras, nothing, no environment settings. So what then? Okay. Yeah. For example, for the same model, if I say sprites, new units, ah, okay, just do this first. Air missiles is the name of our model. So, okay, it's, it should be, yeah, it's populated the model directory. Now we have an uh, air missiles folder in it, and there is a blend file in it which is actually empty right now because we didn't do any importing. So close it again. So this is done only because if I want to actually model all the stuff in Blender, uh, which means if I'm doing the model, of course I'm working on Blender. So let's just close it. So again, sprites I, which this time means import the stuff. And again, let's just do air missiles. And now it started to import um, all the Colada files into my model. Okay, it's finished. So let's just look at it again. Yeah, now it's here. Now, as you can see, also. The materials, the actual materials are here and they are actually, okay, the materials uh, doesn't actually show the textures, but anyway, the textures are there, you can just see it here, of course, if you know about Blender. So the textures are there, just somehow can see it in the blend file texture. So anyway, it did the uh, importing stuff. It uh, replaced the materials with the actual materials uh, I created, uh, but using the actual textures that are painted by the texture artists. And I have no participation in that part. I only do the importing. And let's just see, just in case there is some files here, so sprite set. This is the file folder that should be populated after I render the stuff, so let's just, st uh, this time we are doing the rendering, okay. Yeah, it started to render, so it's here. This is the first level actually, and yeah, this is the default animation. <laughs> As we can see, it started to be rendered. And all the, by the way, all the files have different, uh, all the units have different grid sizes in the game. So I actually, uh, the program actually gets the grid size data and the directional data from a JSON file and renders accordingly. So, okay, this is. This is almost finished. <coughs> and the other uh, levels of the same units are actually getting rendered right now. So it's pretty easy really when when the animation comes to me from the design department the only thing I do is to look at the name of the animation and just uh, do sprites and I R and the thing is rendered correctly so okay it's done yeah uh, and if I can just do sprite a which is the atlas generation thing Somewhere here, we should see the generated atlas 
of the files we just rendered. Okay, so there is if there is something else I can. Yeah, and why using floss? We all know why we use floss because yeah, yeah. the first thing is of course community and uh, it's extremely easy to change stuff uh, and which is a very good thing if you want to customize things, if you want to uh, develop some in-house software, uh, changing some stuff is absolutely necessary and uh, which is when uh, open source comes very handy. So, and also great community of course again. And my contact information, uh, you can find me on Twitter, mail, websites, <coughs> GitHub, and also Freenote, of course. And you can get to our company's website from exeria.com. I know it sounds like English, but not. And, and thanks to community, and special thanks to Libre Graphics community, and of course, Blender Foundation, and thanks to Emacs, Orkmod, Beamer, LibreOffice, and Dream for the presentation tools they provide. Thank you very much. Questions? No questions? So then, yeah, thank you very much. Oh. I, I saw you are using a Blender internal rendering engine. Can it be modified for cycles? Did you, did you think? Uh, yes, possible? indeed, you can modify it for cycles. But I did so many uh, settings by code for the, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the internal. Uh, at this point, uh, for my own project, I wouldn't switch to that because okay. I already thought so. How, that. How, how many lights you are you using, for example, in that setup? There is, is it uh, quite complex because it looked. All right for internal. Yeah, it's it's not actually. Yeah, the the render settings are not really too much. Probably like forty lines of code, so it would be changed in a day. Oh. And Blender internal it actually fits for my needs pretty perfectly right now. So uh, I'm not. This is the main reason I uh, used uh, Blender internal because mm -hmm. Cycles was already there when I started the project, so I could actually choose that, but yeah. Blender internal fits better. So, But it's very, very, very easy because every, yeah, everything in there. I can show you later how easy it is. But okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome.